Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Now we're here at RNG Precision just outside of Northampton. This week's show is going to be a little bit different because I want to find out more about the realities of running a machine shop. And I'm going to talk to Enzo about his machine tool choices and how he's scheduling six months in advance. So before we begin and find out more about the realities of running a machine shop, Enzo RNG Precision, tell me a little bit more about the company. Well, the company was started back in 73, um, and it was doing a lot of shoe components in the uh, Northamptonshire area where all the, the shoe industry were, the shoe factories. Right. Um, it then moved on uh, a bit more technology, up to date, did Formula One work, moved into aerospace and telecoms. Um, and now it's a mixture of all of those, as well as um, some scientific and um, more medical, more and more medical, a little bit of automotive, not so much, but um, the higher end of the scale of, of our customers is mainly uh, medical, aerospace um, and, um, and Formula One. So really, basically, you're looking after so many different in industries, batch sizes, you go in all the way up from ones to thousands? Correct, yeah, we, 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 we top out at around a thousand components and that is sort of spread over a, a, a period of months, but, um, but we go all the way down to five offs, ten offs. So right. yeah, it's, it's for us a comfortable batch size as up to a thousand. Tell me a bit more about where you wanted to be. Are you, uh, as a manager of a company, a director, are you where you wanted to be now? We're getting there. Um, we've, we've moved from like single batches, single component, um, long lead time, long uh, cycle times, where as you can see, we're now moving to multiple parts. Lights out machining is really where I want to push the company. Um, having that production in the evening over the weekends without anyone presence, just coming in to make sure that the machine's still running, which you can do remotely anyway. But yeah, the, slowly, slowly we're getting to where I, I want the company to be. Right, we're going to be looking at some of these machines in a little bit more detail, but let's go and have a look at some of your lower volume cells. Okay. So this is the cell that handles all your low volume equipment. Now, you've got lots of hazards here. What was your first CNC machine? So the first CNC machine the company bought was a Haas VF1 uh, back in the early 90s. And um, we now got, as you can see, uh, a suite of them that does the lower volume, so the 10s to 20s, and, and predominantly the, the three axis work because all of the machines have a, a, a three axis on them. Exactly. Um, now, how does the Haas machine fit in your workshop? Like, do you get some kind of parts and you think, that'll go on my cell? Yeah, again, it's, it's the, the, definitely the low volume. Um, the ones that we can probably got maybe a longer lead time or don't need as many operations or a single op, um, they're all, they're all uh, allocated to these machines. So the ones that are not as complicated, obviously the ones that are complicated would be done on the, on the five axis because it can be done in one go. But if they're not too complicated, um, if they're only like two ops or even one op, pass all the time. So do these have a, do you have a, definitely a pride of place in your machine shop? Oh, 100%. They're good, they're reliable. Um, and, and they consistently do the job and they do it right. So um, it's some, something that we, we need as a, as a business because you can't put them on the, on the most more expensive machine, the more complicated machines you put them on here. Nice and simple, repeat batches, and they just run in the background as well. So it's good because it's, they're, they're workforces basically and they, they'll just do it all the time and, and, and it's done. Yeah, it's, not, it's something that hasn't got big set up and it's not, complicated it's it's simple and it's easy so it's good and it's definitely something that we need uh, and we'll, we'll always have here in our in our workshop right and so let's talk staff members now how many people work here we're currently around 43 all in um, and that's spread over the, the three departments which is the milling the wiring and the turning um, each is headed up by a team leader uh, and then the team leader has like a, a second in command in that section. We've just split the milling uh, department into cells, uh, which we're currently standing in the five axis cell. Um, we have 
uh, a smaller production cell and then a smaller production cell still. So, and each cell has again its own uh, head of cell in, in the milling department. So it's spread out quite, quite evenly in the milling section. We haven't got that in the turning section because it's not as big. But right. in, the, in the milling section, we've, we've decided to split them up into cells. And what would you say that you're doing that's quite efficient in terms of staff? You know, when an order comes in, what's your process? So when, when an order comes in, it goes on to our live manufacturing uh, system. Uh, the drawings are available. All, all documentation that's needed to produce the part is available on the shop floor, on a touch screen. Uh, and then from there, it gets split up into the cells. Uh, and then the head of cells takes care of that all the way through and then the overall team leader in Millen overlooks everything. So with regards to your staff members, what improvements do you think that you could make here then? Well, I think with efficiency with staff, I think it's more having less people per spindle. Yes. So um, the idea in, of, of having not only your machine strategically placed in a cell, uh, but also giving cycle times between machines, so one person probably did two, Yes. Maybe three at a push, but definitely one to two, which then gives us a lot more efficiency uh, with the staff that we've got in, in, uh, in, in the milling section. Yeah, and I think you're doing that exact same thing on your FANUC here. Exactly, yes, we are. Enzo, we're here on your FANUC Robo drill cell. Now, we're trying to improve our staff ratios. How are you looking to do that? So, uh, currently on this cell here, we, we try to do like one person um, per two machines, or even one per three. Uh, and by doing that, Josh, trying to, sounds wrong, but increase cycle time, so it gives them more time in between. It does sound very yeah, wrong, doesn't it? In between sort of cycles, uh, the, the spindle stopping and them having to come back, but also turning it from a single part to a multi-part on each machine. So you're increasing cycle times technically, but you're getting, say, eight parts rather than Correct. one. And what, what technology are you going to use to try and increase those cycle times? So the idea is on these machines here is to remove the, uh, the standard DDR that comes with the FANUX um, and put on a five axis, which then we can then put on um, what we call a little Sputnik... Um, uh, like a porcupine. Like a porcupine yeah. part, which then goes from one component to eight. So that then increases the cycle time and gives them more time to, to scoot about machines. And then you can get some more machines and your operators can be running more machines for the same. Correct, and you get more productivity um, for, less, uh, for less people. Yeah. It's all about sweating the assets, not the people. Correct, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's the way to do it. And in fact, thank you, Lindsay. So that's the part that uh, we were talking about. So if you've got a, four, a five axis uh, DDR, you can put that in there and load up uh, eight parts on there. But not only that, if you set it up properly, you can have one in the machine and one on the bench. So and just quick, do like a quick change. And then have a quick change. Almost like a double pallet without the double Correct. pallet. Yeah. So that's that's the way that's the way moving forward on these machines, what we want to do. I love the fact that you've got more Fanuc Robo drills here than they do even in the Fanuc showroom. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's that uh, we've got about 16 now, so it's yeah. quite a few. Yeah. Right, quite I want to hear about problems. What problems do you face, Enzo? Like I want to hear a day in the life of Enzo. Uh, problems we face. Problems we face is when you when you try and give what we call a one-stop shop to a customer, so you try and cover every basis machine-wise to support your customer and, and processes and um, five axis, four axis, three axis, whatever, you're, the problem I see that I face more and more nowadays is, is more outsourcing and more people outside, like uh, heat treatments and anodizing, and trying to get all that done in the time frame that the customer wants, which I think a lot of people have learnt from Formula One and they're, they're, they're shrinking their, their lead times from what was four to five weeks. Mm. Now they're looking at two weeks or can I have it next week? So that is the issue. But then is the next step for you to bring that in-house or is some of that just absolutely not possible? Uh, I think you need to stick to what you know. If you start bringing foreign processes in, it will take you a long time to learn. Got to train. Uh, predominantly affect your business a lot more. Um, and I think you just need to try and improve and, and speed up your in-house processes to then give more time to you to your outside processes. You know what, you've kind of hit the nail on the head there because that is exactly what you've done with this purchase. Correct, yeah, yeah. Um, and speeding that up, again, just going back to this, if you can do a month's worth 
of components in two days over the weekend, then that gives you as much time as you want to outsource the anodizing or whatever you need to do. So that's, that's how you would do that. Enzo, we're here in front of your newest investment. Now, how do these machines allow you to, to schedule so far in advance? Well, the beauty of these is, is because you've got the option of 10 pallets, um, so if you've got small parts where you've got um, a big order, say like 1,000, you can load them all up. You could probably do all of those components either in an evening or a weekend, which then allows you to do more complex stuff or if you want a lower volume during the day or completely mix it up so you're getting a complete suite of different parts um, during the day and during the night. Which is all about mixing and matching, mixing and matching your parts because most people don't get big 5,000 off orders that they can design a whole automation system around. This is so versatile yeah. that allows you to schedule loads of different parts on the same machine. Yeah, correct. I mean, you don't need a thousand off one part, for example. You could have a thousand off three, four different parts. As long as, as far as I'm concerned, they're all aluminium and you've got the tools, which you should have, you can just run them all and, and treat it as one big batch. And because this is so versatile, how many, how many parts have you got scheduled and how far in advance? So on these two machines, We've run, I would say, probably about 15 different parts. Um, and of those 15 parts, I've got orders from now until June next year, um, which range from 50 a month to 150 a month. So as far as we're concerned, we can run a whole batch, two months worth, three months worth. Uh, and I know that they're, they're, they're firm orders. So yeah. in, just, in just a couple of months, these machines are now almost the backbone of your business. Indeed, correct. Um, and the thing I like about them is, is because you've got the option of all these different parts, when you're putting one in for inspection and you're waiting, you're not got downtime because you just switch the next part on and it runs anyway. So while they're inspecting, you're still producing. Fantastic high, high productivity machine sell. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Of course, you've spoken about some of the highs, yeah. but there, there is lows to you there know, is. Yeah, running of course a machine there is. Shop. Yeah, of course there is. And I think the lows for me, which ultimately if you carry them out correctly will turn into highs yeah so the lows for me on a day-to-day -day basis is not only thinking about five years in the future where do i want to be what's my investment where do i want to go machine wise also in the day-to-day -day, which i can honestly trust my staff to leave and run day to day but they also want some experience and some knowledge and what you've seen before and some input so from, for me, from deciding what machine to buy next, being prepared on what I want on it, how I want it tooled up, how I want the work holding, mm -hmm. and working with the guys project-wise, which I really enjoy, to then literally turning around and making sure I've got enough work for that machine. So yeah. reaching out to customers, going to see them. How do you find to win that time? Work. Because are you, who's, who's selling what? you're making well is I, that find, you? I, I find myself on on business social media sites late at night uh, leaving messages for buyers oh, really? so in the morning um, hopefully they'll reply and, and I'll get an appointment and it literally is finding 10 minutes wherever I can and, yeah. and away from the workshop doing that in my own time so after hours and do you ever get any time to do fun things a little bit. A little bit. Like, like, like this. Like a little this. bit like this, yeah. When you've, got, when you've got a camera crew all day, yeah. He hasn't got it, a choice. It, it distracts you from uh, from day to day running, yeah. Of indeed. course, it kind of breaks it up. Uh, goals, what's your, as I often say, utopia of where you want to be? You've mentioned goals five years, ten years. You know, you, I'm thinking you're going to want to invest, but where do you want to be? Um, investment, yes. Uh, more automated machinery, uh, but, but also just more efficient, more throughput. I mean, obviously my goal is to get more output for the same amount of people that I've got now. Yes. Um, if I achieve that, then I know that the goal is there. But um, equally to do that, you need to invest and you need to invest in faster, newer technology to keep up with other companies around you. Ah, thank you. It's so good to kind of see an insight into your life and uh, hopefully we'll be back soon again and the machine shop might look a little bit more different with some more machines in as Thank well, you, some yeah. more of these. Will do. Thanks, Enzo. Thank you.